Body politics. Another topic worth mentioning is body politics. This term refers to practices and policies introduced by society in order to control and regulate the human body. It also concerns the ongoing struggle between individuals and society over who gets to decide how much control there is over the physical bodies. One of the important political arguments used within this term is the personalist political originated and popularized during the second wave of feminism. This notion emphasizes that private concerns are deeply intertwined with larger power dynamics, societal norms and political systems. So the topic body politics can refer to many questions, political suppressions of human needs, regulations, acceptance, shame, and in many senses, it talks about censorship. When talking about the examples of censorship in Ukrainian contemporary art, one of the most striking and famous examples of it would be the closing of the exhibition Ukrainian Body. This exhibition was held at the Visual Cultural Center at the Kyiv Mahila Academy in Kyiv. This happened in 2012, two years before the Revolution of Dignity. Three days after the opening, the then rector Serhii Kvit closed the exhibition saying that it was not art but crap and a set of pornographic images. After that, the university received letters of support which calls uh, for the reassumption of the center's work in full among the authors of which are Slavoj Žižek, Erik Fasin, David Elliott, Alexander Kwasniewski, Sergei Kelchik and many others. Later, the lector apologized to the artist for his words and admitted his incompetence in matters of art. The exhibition never reopened, but what was it about in the first place? The participating artist reconsidered the body as a commodity going beyond conversations about utilizing the body by workers in the field of sexual work. The artist also explored societal shame and disgust towards bodies of others, where attitudes toward the body often depend on societal openness, prevailing agendas and the contextual environment. Sometimes the body serves as a tool to express one's position, level of freedom, anxiety, violence, stability, and the political personal relationship. Let's look at some of the works presented at the exhibition. One of the participants of the exhibition, Ukrainian artist Mykola Ridny, in collaboration with Anna Krivensova, presented the work Rada. The word Rada in Ukrainian means council or parliament and refers to the Supreme Council of Ukraine. The work presents a two-channel installation with the juxtaposition of the two scenarios, a close-up of a female's genitals on one of the screens and a session of the Ukrainian parliament on the second one. Comically, it's getting unclear which of the screens is more pornographic and obscene. The description of the work in the exhibition catalog says, moral panic has been a convenient resource for politicians to divert attention from truly urgent social problems. Ironically, the act of shutting down the exhibition Ukrainian body could be seen as a good example of an illustration to this quote. Another participant of the exhibition, Ukrainian artist Anatoly Belov, with the work My Porn is My Right. Initiated in 2009, the series protests a bill criminalizing the possession or online posting of nude photos. Replicating a mirror room at a police station, Belov prompts us to witness his character's autoerotic practices, challenging state intrusion into intimate spaces. This artwork critiques authorized intervention, staring back at the viewer and highlighting the indignity of their position. But let's look at other Ukrainian artworks reflecting on the contextual influence on the body that preceded the above-mentioned exhibition. In 2006, in the same place where the exhibition Ukrainian body was happening, namely the Kyiv Mahila Academy, an Ukrainian artist held a performance only for men or my beloved appear in the mirror. This performance was created by Aleftina Kahidze, an artist with a distinctive and idiosyncratic artistic path. Pioneering conceptual work on gender roles, she frequently engages in performances that prompt reflections on her own position and body. According to the critic Tamara Zlobina, the performance only for men was the first Ukrainian feminist artistic gesture since it was the first to consciously proclaim its feminist theme. During the performance, Kahidze sat for several hours in a gallery room on a chair opposed to a large mirror. Only male visitors were allowed to enter the gallery space, and by that the performance referred to the tradition of the fortune-telling, where the young woman had to see her fiancé in the mirror during divination. In this performance, all of the participants are becoming suppressed. 
women because they cannot enter the space, men who are getting objectified by the artist, and the artist herself is becoming objectified as well. The Ukrainian artist Alevsina Kahidze has created a body of work on feminist themes, including the video work I Can Be a Girl with Blue Eyes. In this work, the artist slowly and unpleasantly places the blue eye lenses onto her dark brown eyes. In this work, Kahidze constructs her own appearance, referring to the stereotypes trying to fit into the contemporary standards of beauty. The artist assumes the responsibility of constructing her own identity and reserves the choice for herself. The performance Only for Men or My Beloved Appear in the Mirror arguably marked the first time the feminist themes were openly discussed in Ukrainian contemporary art, gracefully revealing social injustice. In this work, Alevsina Kahidze redefines the boundaries of her intimate world, reappropriates the right to subjectivity, and expands her own space. The human body becomes political even without its consent. These are the words by Ukrainian artist Maria Kulikovska. Unapologetic in her frankness, Kulikovska works with a semi-activistic attitude that unsettles the administrative apparatus and its representatives. Her practice is deeply intertwined with contextual pressure, whether the governmental or social. In 2010, Kulikovska started to work on the Army of Clones, which are 20 plaster sculpture casts molded from her own naked body. From 2012, this piece was on view in the garden of the Foundation Isolatio on Donetsk, an industrial city on the east of Ukraine, in the exhibition Gender in Isolatia, Themes of Patriarchy and Identity Tailoring, curated by Alena Cervonik. After the beginning of the war in Ukraine in 2014, the occupation of the territory by the so-called Donetsk People's Republic began. The pro-Russian terrorist group took over Isolatia's building and made it into a prison, a place for torture. On the 9th of June 2014, the sculptures from the Army of Clones were shot, possibly used as targets in an act of loathing and disgust towards the object of Ukrainian culture. After the incident, Kulikovska recreated her own naked body in sculptures many times using different materials for casting, plaster, wax or soap. By placing these works under the open sky, the artist lets the natural forces, such as wind and rain, change them, modifying them until they are completely destroyed by the environment. However, in 2014, the environment appeared to be too political and their destruction far too literal. If talking about queer and Ukrainian art, I think the first name one could remember is Anatoly Belov, who constantly works on the topic of queerness, sexuality and homosexuality. You have seen his drawings within the Ukrainian body exhibition, but he is a multidisciplinary artist who shifts between working with illustrations, text, music, performance and films. Also, he was a member of the art group Rap in 2004 and is a co-founder of the musical group Lutska Podoba together with Gosha Babansky. Today, he is developing a solo project named Kibela. Called in honor of the Greek goddess whom the artist perceives as the patroness of queers. Another part of his activity is Body Practices, which is a multi-valued research project that Anatoly Belov started together with another Ukrainian artist and film director, Aksana Kazmina. This project explores the topic of physicality and inspects society through the bodily experiences. Within this project, the artists were collecting people's stories about their different bodily experiences through an interactive VR installation in the form of a tent where the visitors could communicate with the VR Kibela. The artist presents the alternative to the existing institute of religion. Kibela is a goddess who will accept everyone without limits. Here, visitors can come and tell their story as a confession, but without all of the taboos on physicality which are experienced in conservative churches. Here, people are not excluded or condemned for their desires and needs. The last artist whom I would like to mention here would be Alina Kapitsa. In her practice, she is focused on topics of sexuality, personal boundaries, consent, eroticism, as well as the alternatives to the established gender stereotypes. Leaning into and continuing sewing practices developed in her family, Kapitsa mean medium is a textile collage, but sometimes she is also shifting to work with silicone and ceramics. Kapitsa exposes the taboo and deliberately hidden topics of carnality and sexuality to the audience. Even though more conventionally a traditional audience may get easily provoked by the images seen on her textiles and uh, can be perceived as violent, the reality of the works are about the unacceptance of violence, about the consent, trust and understanding. 
In the summer of 2008, Alina Kapitza made a public performance during which she visualized the desperate need to claim personal space in crowded public areas. She was wearing a self-made dress with a white large skirt and traveling from Fastov, the city around 60 kilometers from Kyiv, to the central street in Kyiv by the electric train and metro during the rush hour. The penetration of another person into an inner imaginary circle causes tension and anxiety. This is the end of my short three-part introduction to Ukrainian contemporary art in the turmoil of war and revolution. I hope that these short lectures featuring the art projects by Ukrainian artists shed some light on the present-day history of Ukraine. Of course, many other extremely important artists and their works were not mentioned here. I believe, however, that it could be a starting point to the subsequent research. Thank you.